everyone, I am Riddhi Basantani, final year BHMS student. In this video, we will be studying about venous thrombosis, mainly about the deep vein thrombosis. So, with no more further ado, let's start with the topic. Venous thrombosis. Venous thrombosis is a very common surgical problem which has great influence on the morbidity and mortality of surgical patients. Nowadays, great stress is being led on the hypercoagulability factor. Damage to the endothelium leads to platelet adherence which is the start of the thrombotic process with fibrin deposition. Mainly, there are two types of venous thrombosis. First one, thrombophlebitis. This is mainly seen in the superficial veins. In this cases, venous thrombosis is associated with acute inflammatory response giving rise to pain, local swelling, redness and tenderness. Second category is phlebothrombosis, DVT also known as deep vein thrombosis. Here the thrombus produces little local signs or symptoms and may be loosely attached to the vein wall so that emboli may be dislodged from this thrombus to cause fetal pulmonary Now let's talk in detail about deep vein thrombosis also known as phlebothrombosis. The main predisposing factors are stasis, increased blood coagulability and injury to the vessel wall. Deep vein thrombosis occurs more often after operations, any debilitating illness immobility for a considerable period, childbirth, and some sorts of local trauma. Another important feature is that post-operative thrombosis is rare before the age of 40 and is more often seen following operations on the hip joint, on the prostate, cancer, and in obese patients. The calf is the most frequent site of thrombosis. From here, thrombus extends in a serpentine fashion into the main deep veins. Other veins are also involved less frequently. Clinical features Venous thrombosis often is asymptomatic and clinical indications are present in only 40% or less of patients with venous thrombosis. The main symptom is an aching pain. The pain is aggravated by muscular activity at the site of the thrombus. Sometimes there is only a feeling of heaviness aggravated by standing. Swelling is another symptom which is noticeable at the dependent part. Physical findings. The three most important signs which are present in a case of DVT are swelling, tenderness and Homan's sign. Homans was the first physician to emphasize the importance of venous thrombosis in the legs as source of pulmonary emboli. He described a test which is known as Homans sign. In this test, passive forceful dorsiflexion of the foot with the knee extended will elicit pain in the calf. Moose sign. Squeezing of the calf muscles from side to side is painful in case of DVT. Various sites of involvement. First, calf vein thrombosis. The most frequent site of thrombosis is probably the veins of the calf. Second, femoral vein thrombosis. Quite often, thrombosis of calf veins is associated with thrombosis of the femoral veins. Third, iliofemoral venous thrombosis. It may also be associated with calf vein thrombosis. The reason may be apparently longer course of the left vein, its constriction by the right iliac artery and occasional presence of congenital web at its junction with the inferior vena cava. Fourth, pelvic vein thrombosis. Thrombosis of the pelvic veins is rare and often involves branches of the interior iliac veins. Special investigations that can be done are flabography, radioactive fibrinogen test, Doppler USG, plethysmography, venous pressure measurement and duplex ultrasound imaging. Preventive measures. The main points to be considered in preventing DVT are to minimize venous stasis, to avoid venous intimal injury and to reduce hypercoagulability. Preoperative care. Time spent in hospital awaiting operation should be reduced to the minimum. Leg elevation above the level of the heart is quite effective. During operation, elevation of leg during operation if possible is quite effective in reducing DVT. Hypertonic or irritating intravenous solutions should not be used into the veins of the lower extremities. If they are to be used, it is best given by an indwelling catheter. Use of anticoagulants, example heparin in small doses. Post-operative measures. Low molecular weight dextrin has been used to prevent venous thrombosis. Aspirin in small doses has both been able to reduce post-operative pain and prevent. Elastic stockings and leg elevation. Now let's talk about the treatment. Conservative treatment. Bed rest is indicated for about 7 days after the diagnosis is established. Elevation of legs above the level of the heart decreases the pressure in the veins. When walking is started, an elastic stocking should be used. Heparin drugs prevent thrombus formation by inhibiting the formation of thromboplastin and also acts as an anti-thrombin. Cumarin derivatives. These derivatives interfere with four factors in the clotting mechanism. Fibrinolytic drugs and use of pharmacological agents that inhibit platelet functions.
Operative treatment bypass procedure simple bypass with vein or prosthetic material may be used in larger vessels example vena cava and iliac veins valvular repair when the venous valves in the deep veins are damaged valvular repair is done valve transplant by autograft a portion of the vein which contains defective valves following deep vein thrombosis may be replaced by transplanting a segment of axillary vein or brachial vein of the same person which contains competent valves so this was all about deep vein thrombosis thanks for watching